All right, all right, all right. What it do, my fellow mushy blobs of atomic molecules? My name is Hans, king of the jungle plants, always hoarding all the teal bricks, and berserk for Legos. Today's the day I finally unveiled the remaining two types of transportation in Paradisa City. So put on your pajama onesies, brace yourselves, and let's get loopy. Origin story time. So I said today I'm going to unveil two modes of futuristic transportation for Paradisa City. The first one I'm going to talk about is going to be the Hyperloop. And you're going to want to stay tuned for the second half of this video where I talk about the second mode of transportation, which I'm not going to say anything until I get there. And I'm also going to throw out a quick disclaimer. All the stuff that you see over here, these are just temporary props just for the making of this video. It's not any actual build that's going to go into my upcoming Lego City, Paradisa City, a tropical city of the future, the year 2060. And the other thing I want to say is that the modes of transportation at the moment are just concepts and they're preliminary mock-ups. Between now and when I start building Paradisa City, these could change quite a bit. Today's video is the part two of Paradisa City transportation. If you haven't seen part one, go check out my new road plates video where I talk about the first three modes of transportation that will be implemented in Paradisa City. And this part two is is where I unveil the second two modes of transportation. All right, Hyperloop time. I am absolutely stoked to present to you guys my fourth mode of transportation, the Hyperloop. How would you guys like to live in a city where you just hop into a Hyperloop transport and zip across the country at 700 miles an hour to get to your destination in just 30 minutes? Now, I'm super stoked to build a Hyperloop in Paradisa City because one, it really is going to be a transportation system of the future, and Paradisa City, city of the future in the year 2060, definitely has to have a Hyperloop. Two, building trains in a Lego city takes up way too much space and I get to build this underneath my city and hopefully this will inspire other people to add Hyperloops. Airplanes will be a thing of the past. I'm telling you guys, I cannot wait for the day when I get to ride a Hyperloop for the very first time and beneath the city, beneath the autonomous roadways, is going to be the Hyperloop station. So underneath Paradisa City at the very bottom, I'm going to build not one, but two Hyperloop stations. One is going to be the transportation hub for passengers going from one city to all the other major cities in the country. The other one is going to be a Hyperloop cargo terminal. So let's get more into depth on this. Now I'm sure many of you have already heard of Hyperloop. And in case some of you haven't, this is a brand new form of transportation that Elon Musk, owner of SpaceX, Tesla, and the Boring Company, presented in 2013. The basic concept is, is that you have transportation pods that shoot through a tube with vacuum at extremely high speeds. The Hyperloop will remove the two biggest obstacles for any mode of transportation. The first one being friction. So wheels rolling on the ground creates friction. Hyperloop will use a magnetic levitation, very similar to the maglev trains in Shanghai, China, which are completely awesome because I've gotten to ride on the maglev in Shanghai. The other major obstacle is is air resistance. Air resistance is a huge factor in slowing down the top speed of transportation. And I remember back in college when I was taking physics classes, learning about the power required to overcome air drag. And the big thing to realize is that the faster and faster you go, the greater the air pushes back on the vehicle. And because the greater the air pushes back on the vehicle, it takes more and more and more and more power to overcome it. And that's one of the reasons why it's so hard for supercars to achieve speeds greater than 300 miles per hour. By the time you get up to 300 miles per hour, the amount of power, even, even cars with over 1,500 horsepower, you get to the point where even if you add an extra 1,000 horsepower, your increase in speed is pretty small, which is extremely inefficient. Now with a Hyperloop, because the pods are traveling through a tube that is not in perfect vacuum, but in near vacuum, most of that air resistance is gone, and it requires dramatically less energy to get up and maintain 700 miles per hour through a tube in a near vacuum. And not long after Elon Musk presented his Hyperloop plans, a number of companies popped up to start working on this all new mode of transportation. There's a Virgin Hyperloop One. They just recently did their first human passenger test ride. And I'll be leaving video links down in the description if you want to learn more about the Hyperloop. They've already got plans for two different routes, one going from Dubai to Abu Dhabi, which reduces travel time from two hours down to 12 minutes. Another one is going to be from Pune to Mumbai in India. Virgin Hyperloop One has a goal of having safety certification completed by 2025 and be up and running by 2030. There is Hyperloop Transportation Technologies Company, which is building a test track in France. There is the Hart Hyperloop, which is in Northern Europe, and their focus is on cargo. In Paradisa City, I'm using the Hyperloop to completely replace airplanes as a major way to travel around the world from major city to major city versus airplanes. Hyperloop is going to be safer, no turbulence, a very smooth ride, very low energy, and more efficient than airplanes. 
airplanes. It's going to be fast. It's going to be clean energy. It's going to dramatically improve the economic opportunities and development of cities of the future. And now let's talk about the Hyperloop Pod. So the first thing you're going to notice is I'm using a roller coaster track. And I really like this roller coaster track because it's small, compact, and it actually has an amazingly low friction rolling resistance. I think Lego did a really good job in designing this roller coaster track. And I've already seen quite a few people use this particular track to build their own elevated monorails in their Lego cities. And for a Hyperloop that's going to travel 700 miles an hour, and the existing Lego railroad tracks just aren't going to cut it. First, they don't even look like a magnetic levitating track. And the other thing is that they don't roll as smooth as these roller coaster tracks. So for my Hyperloop, I'm going to be using the roller coaster tracks, and, and I'm really excited to do that. So like I said, I think Lego did a great job in designing these roller coasters. These wheels are ultra low friction, and they just glide like butter. So here you can see that I have mounted two of the roller coasters to the very bottom of this. And all I've done is just use a little turntable. And the other thing you'll notice is that I'm using the standard Lego airplane fuselage. These eight stud wide fuselage pieces are the perfect size and they're almost round. And on that note, I would like to see Lego develop better airplane fuselage pieces where it makes the airplane completely round. Because in real life, uh, airplanes don't have these flat sections on there. I'm also not a big fan of the new airplane nose canopy. I kind of designed it to make it look like Airbus's biggest airplane ever. And in the process, they made this one brick taller than the previous airplane nose canopy, which is awesome because now we can get uh, many figures that can stand up in there better. However, giving a jumbo jet a look and appearance to a, an airplane that's only eight studs wide that can only fit two aisles of seating and going over to the back here too, you can see I'm also using the new Lego molds for the airplane tail section. Now on a Hyperloop, they don't need windows. I would have loved to have built this without any windows. The big engineering disadvantage to windows is that it adds weight, which then decreases your efficiency, which then requires more power to carry that extra weight and decreases your energy efficiency, which then raises the cost of, of buying a ticket. And the other thing too, is that it just adds more complicated structural engineering into designing these fuselages. Even on a regular airplane, it would be better to just not have windows at all. All right, and let me show you guys the inside. And for the door, I decided not to use the regular airplane door that Lego has. I like this idea of a flip up door much better, especially for a Hyperloop. First of all, the Lego door is a bit more frail than this setup. The other thing is that the Lego door has an orange print stripe right there on the very bottom of the door. And now the interior. So again, I don't consider this model to be 100% cleat. It'll probably undergo more changes in the near future. One thing that this lacks is the ability to easily remove the roof. I don't have the tiles with the single studs up here so that it can easily come on and off. And one of the main reasons is that because this just works out so nicely, I'm having to use this one by 16 brick that's only connected here and here. I'll probably end up having to convert this into a couple of plates and then lowering down these wall panels uh, one plate so that I can add the tiles up here at the top. So I'm really happy to say that I got 16 seats in this Hyperloop pod. And the nice thing about Hyperloops is that it doesn't have an operator or a driver. It is completely automated. The entire pod can be occupied by passenger seats. Now one thing that this Hyperloop pod doesn't have is the ability to store luggage. That's probably going to bug me enough to try and, and figure something out when it comes time to actually building the Hyperloop station in Paradisa City. The other thing that I like is the fact that I'm using a bunch of brackets as well as these 2 by 4 bow slopes to act as side skirts and basically keep the magnetic levitation tracks completely hidden. Now I'm really happy with how this Hyperloop pod turned out and I think this is a good representation of it. I'm glad it, I was able to get 16 seats in there. So yeah, so when I start to build the Hyperloop station, it's going to be a pretty sizable station. Probably going to have two tunnels that are incoming into the station. There'll be an offboarding platform and then the pods will loop back around. There'll be an onboarding platform. There will be two more tunnels that will jet these Hyperloop pods out and away. Now, I would like to be able to motorize these in a way. And my idea for that is that once the Hyperloop gets into the tunnel, I'll have a motor which has two large wheels on either side. The rubber tire on the wheels will grab the side of this Hyperloop and those spinning wheels will just accelerate this thing straight down the track super fast. I'll just have the track loop on the opposite end so it'll shoot out and then it'll also loop back around and come flying back into the arrival station and make it look like as if this is a completely different hyperpod that is coming in from another city. Now one thing to note is that Hyperloop stations are designed to be much faster than airports. An airport you have to go an hour or two early just to check in, just to go through security and then you're waiting and waiting and waiting and then you got to board the plane and you got to wait another 
another 20 to 30 minutes for everybody to board the airplane. And it's a good waste of two to three hours, maybe even four or five hours of people's time with this type of Hyperloop. The idea is that you literally go to the station within 15 to 30 minutes, you're already off and flying to your next destination. And Hyperloops don't stop at different stations along the way. You get on a Hyperloop that is bound directly for the city that you're going to, and you're not having to, say like a bus or a train, spend time stopping at all these different points along the way. So on that note, let's talk about the cargo Hyperloop. And now for the Cargo Hyperloop. Now I'm really excited for Cargo Hyperloop because it'll completely revolutionize the shipping industry and make things a whole lot faster and cheaper. Currently, shipping by airplane is actually really expensive, especially when you're shipping goods and purchases from one country to the other. The primary way of shipping from country to country is by ship. And that takes a really long time. That takes about, and a lot of times, it takes about a month to for goods and, and online purchases to get to their final destination. So with a cargo hyperloop, you can have tubes that can go across oceans that are submerged in the water, say like 100 feet below the surface of the water. And you just got tons of these cargo hyperloops with shipping containers, cheaper than airplane, faster than a cargo ship. And this will be great for e-commerce, uh, for purchasing online, which in Paradisa City in the year 2060, majority of purchases are done from the computer online at home through web browsing. Most retail stores in Paradisa City will take on a a new form of retail in Paradisa City, which will be some, a topic I'll cover later in the future. Now, most of the development for a cargo Hyperloop are these pods that are completely enclosed. Originally, that was basically my same intent was to build a Hyperloop cargo pod where it had like bay doors that opened up and then like shipping pallets would go inside. I also wanted my cargo Hyperloop to do shipping containers. And because of the size of the shipping containers, I had to do an open design. And the nice thing about the Hyperloop is that the tubes are under vacuum and you don't have to really worry about aerodynamics and drag coefficient within the Hyperloop tube. Now these may not travel at 700 miles an hour. It could be a bit slower. Maybe it's like 300, 400 miles an hour. These can also run through the system individually or they can run together in a group. So before I talk about the cargo Hyperloop, I do want to talk about the shipping containers. So I specifically designed these shipping containers. Big thing that I have in mind with shipping containers is that the current way of building shipping containers is that they're only six studs wide. And the problem with the six studs wide is that for the walls, they take up one brick of space on either side. And so what you're left with is only four studs wide of interior capacity. And to me, that's no fun. It's really limiting to how much cargo you can put in here. And even though the minifigure world is compactified, to me, it's disappointing. And if you haven't already seen my video on my Lego tram bus, I definitely recommend watching that because in that video, I talk about my own personal protocols of minifigure scale that I stick to and I think makes proportional sense. So if you want to know more about my protocols of proportional scale in regards to Lego vehicles, definitely go check that video out as well as go see a really cool tram. And in that video, I talk about how I think trains should be eight studs wide, shipping containers should be seven studs wide, very large industrial trucks, shipping trucks should be seven studs wide, and compact size industrial trucks are six studs wide. And so that's what this is. It's six studs wide on the interior and then to make up the siding of of the shipping container, it adds on just a wee bit more than seven studs wide. And I am really stoked to have six studs wide of interior cargo space. Now this is a real shipping container. Look at all those boxes in there. So I consider this to be a shipping container of the future. These are more compact shipping containers than what you'll see in the real world. This new smaller shipping container size, a new worldwide global industrial size designed specifically for cargo Hyperloop. And I love how this came out. The other thing is I had a lot of fun designing the interlocking components. So I've designed these so that they're easily stackable. And, and I've even designed flat shipping pallets that are also easily stackable. In fact, you can also stack pallets on top of pallets and you can even stack shipping containers on top of pallets. And not only that, but smaller open shipping crates can also stack on top of these shipping containers as well as onto the 
shipping pallets. And so for Paradisa City that has completely modular interlocking shipping systems where you got shipping containers, smaller shipping crates, and shipping pallets that all work with each other. And you may recognize this from my last video from the Cargo Master Crane. And since that video, I ended up making uh, several changes up here at the top and the bottom in order to make it work with this new modular system. The other thing I tried to do was to leave gaps in there so that a forklift can come in and pick up these crates and these pallets. Now that I have a full six studs of interior space in this shipping container, I was able to get my five stud wide car right into this shipping container. How cool is that? Now it is a little bit disappointing because I know that in real life, a full size pickup truck can fit inside a shipping container, but I think this is a great compromise. And again, I am just totally happy that I got a car in here. All right, cargo Hyperloop pod. So I've obviously designed it so that two shipping containers can easily stack on here and then it goes off and flying to its destination and it's pretty much built similar to the passenger hyperloop so i've got a bunch of plates here as the floor and underneath are the magnetic levitation tracks right there i'm using some two by eight fuselage pieces at the very bottom on the very ends and originally i was planning on using the airplane nose pieces on either end of it but it kind of wasted a lot of excess space of unused nose piece and didn't really make sense. So I decided to go with something that was much shorter and I was glad to have a couple of these pieces hanging around. And I really like how it came out. I think it looks really good. So the shipping pallets will be locked down to the cargo hyperloop. And since the hyperloop tubes are not at 100% vacuum, and so it kind of helps deflect what very little air is in there. So the shipping container is not taking the brunt of it. And it is completely symmetrical on both ends. Oh, and I really like these uh, transparent pieces as well. And just to show you, uh, I can get a shipping pallet on here, clicks in nicely. And one thing to point out is I left these studs exposed. And this is basically to hook up straps or chains, anything to strap down the uh, whatever cargo is going to be mounted to this and of course the open crates will also work in here or let me let me show you the one with a tractor and so the idea is i'll probably build like 10 or 15 of these cargo hyperloop pods my idea is to build about three outgoing hyperloop tubes and three ingoing hyperloop tubes and there will be a major hyperloop cargo hub so as soon as these things fly in there will be an autonomous robotic crane that will immediately grab these right off of the pod almost immediately it'll swing around the loop it'll be loaded with the next set of uh, shipping containers and then it'll fly off to its next destination and of course, there'll be probably be an inspection station. There'll be a section where regular shipping trucks will come down, pick up these pallets and crates and shipping containers and ship them off to the businesses at their final destination. All right, enough about the cargo hyperloop. Who's ready to talk about the final mode of transportation in Paradise City? I know I am. All right, and now I unveil the last and final mode of transportation for Parody the City. So just a quick rehash. We got roads for scooters and bicycles. We've got walkable pathways for industrial vehicles. We've got an underground autonomous roadways down there for shipping and emergency and garbage trucks. And below that we have from either city to city or state to state or country to country, we have the Hyperloop and the cargo Hyperloop. So one thing that we're really missing is a major mode of transportation for intercity. So if you want to go from the Mission District in San Francisco over to Pier 39, you're definitely not going to walk. You could take a scooter or a go-kart, but that would take too long. And Hyperloop's not going to take you there because that only takes you to the cities that are really far away. So what is it going to be? Ah, uh, well, I'll tell you what it's not going to be. It's not going to be a bus. It's not going to be a light rail. It's not going to be a subway. It's not going to be a monorail. It's not going to be a cable car. It's not going to be a train. And it's not going to be a flying drone aircraft. Nope, none of those. Instead, it's a mashup. What do you get when you take a car in a Hyperloop and mash them together? It's what I call the Hyperpod system. And that is going to go underground beneath the city, beneath the autonomous roadways, but it's going to be above the Hyperloop. So we're calling this the Hyperpod system and it's going to have magnetic levitating cars running through very small tubes that intersperse throughout the city and these little Hyperpods, they're not going to be traveling at 700 miles an hour, not even 300 miles an hour, not even 200 miles an hour. They'll travel about 120 to 130 miles per hour and you can get from one end of the city to the other within a matter of minutes. Now this isn't a completely brand new idea because I'm literally taking existing ideas that already exist and kind of merging them together. I'm 
taking the Hyperloop system, as well as Elon Musk's tunnel boring company to merge those two together. And the idea for the Elon Musk boring company is that it builds much smaller radius tunnels that connect different areas of the cities together. So currently they just finished drilling the tunnel that goes from the Las Vegas Convention Center, which is about, I think, a mile and a half apart. And it has the ability to take regular cars. However, merging those two ideas together, I have not heard anywhere else. Maybe somebody else has already thought of it and I just haven't known about it. But as far as I know, it is my own idea. All right, so how does my hyperpod system work? Well, let me tell you, sort of like a subway station, there will be a bunch of hyperpod stations every few blocks within a city. And all you need to do is leave your home, walk or bicycle, or even get a scooter ride to your nearest hyperpod station. It may even be possible that you've got a hyperpod station directly underneath your high-rise apartment building, and you just simply take the elevator straight down to the station. In fact, most high-rise buildings will have elevators and tunnels that will take you directly to the nearest hyperpod station. And before you even get to the hyperpod station on your phone, you've already reserved a hyperpod for yourself, and there will be various different types of hyperpods based on the need that you need it for. So the smallest hyperpod will be sized for one or two people. The next size up, there will be a bigger hyperpod sized for about four people. Another size will be for six to eight people. There will be like a bus size hyperpod that can take up to 15 people, say like a class that needs to go on a school trip or something, or a party of people that are all uh, traveling together. And then there will also be hyperpod vans, which can haul unconventional cargo for you. In Paradisa City, it has a shipping system that operates so well in the autonomous roadways that anytime you have a large items that you need to have shipped, uh, you do it through that system and not really so much through the hyperpod system. And in that case, what you do is you just order a, an autonomous shipping vehicle to come to your location. You load it up and it'll take your items directly to the destination. So one example of that, let's say you go shopping and you buy a whole bunch of plants at a plant store and you simply just tell the plant store to order up an autonomous shipping car. Plant store will arrange for the, all the items that you've just bought to be automatically be delivered to your home. So in Paradisa City, even when you go shopping and you buy stuff, you don't need to carry it around with you. The stores that you buy it from will automatically have an automated system that arranges for the pickup and transfer of all your items that you've bought. And here is just a couple of concepts of my hyperpods. So let me tell you why I really like the hyperpod transportation system. One is that it is a direct destination. Public transportation nowadays requires you to get on a large vehicle that is crowded with other people and then you have to be on that public transportation for a good 30 to 40 minutes because you've now got to wait as it stops at all the stops. Subway trains and light rails all need to stop every five to ten minutes and all you want to do is just get to your destination. Well with this hyperpod transportation system individual cars cars will go directly to the destination that you want to go to. Doesn't stop. The hyperpod system is essentially an underground freeway system of magnetically levitating cars that are traveling at 120 miles an hour. Now I know what you're thinking is that it's going to be pretty inefficient to have all these little cars for individual people and I will agree that it is more inefficient in an energy and resource way. However it is solving one major problem in getting people to ride public transportation and that is having your own private space and safety. With public transportation, you have to deal with the unpredictable nature of other human beings that are unsafe. And there are people who have social anxiety when being around people they don't know very well. The hyperpod system needs to be a transportation system that works for nearly everybody. Another awesome aspect of the hyperpod system is they're going to be clean. Yes, the horrible thing about public transportation is just how nasty and dirty they can be. Uh, with all kinds of weird, crazy human beings going in there and who knows where they've been sitting and what they've been doing. So with these hyperpods, these cars, as soon as they arrive at a station, they unload the passengers. There will be a camera operator that will use a camera to see inside to check whether it needs to be thoroughly cleaned. So let's say if somebody threw up or, um, you know, a dog took a piss on the floor or something like that, then this car will be routed off into a cleaning bay. Otherwise, this hyperpod will move into a chamber where it'll then be flushed out with a burst of air that also has sanitizing aerosols in the air and it'll 
it'll desanitize all the internal surfaces inside the hyperpod. And then after that, it's ready to get loaded up and the next person loads up the next set of people and off it goes to their particular destination. So it's private, it's clean, and it's super fast and it goes directly to your destination. It's already a thousand times better than today's existing bus and light rail transportation systems. So as soon as you get to your hyperpod station, you've already got a hyperpod waiting for you because you've reserved it on your phone. It picks you up. And the great thing is that these hyperpods are run by a highly sophisticated AI machine learning artificial intelligent program manager and is able to network all the current flow of traffic through the hyperpod tubes and send them off to their destination. And it knows when the busiest traffic routes and traffic times are and the tr busiest traffic stations. As soon as cars drop people off, if it doesn't need to be at that particular station, it'll reroute itself completely empty right back to one of the stations that is experiencing extremely high traffic so that you can pick up more people that way. So unused pods will be rerouted to the stations that are running at peak capacity. All right, and so this is my example of a one and two passenger hyperpod, and I'm just using a single track right there. Now, I think in real life, they won't actually look like this. They'll probably be even cooler looking than this. However, because of this roller coaster track, it takes up quite a bit of space and the minifigure needs to sit. And just due to the, the nature of this particular size and, and the pieces that are available to me, but I think in real life, the pods are going to be a lot cooler looking than this. The other thing is that the pod probably aren't going to have windows because you don't even need windows. There's, I mean, you're going to be traveling through a dark tube and you're just going to hop inside. You're going to chill. You're going to be on your phone scrolling through the latest news or your latest TikTok feed or listening to your podcast or some music and you'll be off of this thing within five to ten minutes. And the nice thing is that in my particular case, before COVID-19, the distance from my house to my workplace is 20 miles. But because of traffic, is so bad in the California Bay Area, it oftentimes takes me 45 minutes to an hour just to get there. And I know that if I were to do 100 miles an hour on the freeway, if there was no traffic whatsoever, I would be able to get there within 10 to 15 minutes. So in the hyperpod system, because of the hyperpods are so precisely controlled, there won't be a buildup of traffic, even at the stations. The stations will be designed to handle the influx, ingoing and outgoing uh, high flow of hyperpod. And here is my example of an even bigger hyperpod. I've only got four seats in here, but I think in real life, this would probably be a six passenger hyperpod. And I really like how sleek this came out using these, these window pieces. And this has only got four seats in there, but I think in real life, a hyperpod this size will carry about six people. For the most part, I like how it came out, but unfortunately what I don't like is the roller coaster tracks. I had to end up moving them off to the sides. They're, they're not great for integrating into the bottom of the hyperpods because they need to be able to pivot to go around the track corners. Because of that, it would have elevated this thing to be much, much taller, which is something I didn't want to do. Um, so I kind of wish that LEGO would kind of give us individual wheel tracks rather than these double ones. I'm really hoping that LEGO eventually comes around to using this roller coaster track as a monorail style track, because a lot of people are already doing that. So the shape of the car, I love it. These tracks hanging out here, I don't love it. I'll ignore and pretend that it's only a single track, and hopefully someday LEGO will hear my call and maybe make a single track roller coaster coaster wheel setup so that we can build stuff like this. All right, so here's the other thing. Because Paradisa City doesn't have regular personal cars, what happens to all the car companies? This is what happens to all the car companies. In the city of Paradisa, any car company can make hyperpods and they can either own their own network of hyperpods and lease them out to the city or sell them to the city. And then the other thing too is that any citizen of Paradisa City, if they have enough money, can buy their own personal hyperpod and of course, they'll have to pay for the storage of the hyperpod when it's not in use. I imagine the exceptionally rich will probably even have hyperpod tunnels that can go directly to their residences. Although, I mean, that's that's something that's going to cost millions and millions of dollars for them to t bore their own tunnels. And of course, you know, it's going to require lots of permits. And so the other thing with these hyperpods is that you can request various levels of quality. So if you're a person that loves absolute luxury for a bit more money, you can request hyperpods pods that are fully decked out in luxuriousness with, you know, like full on leather seats and whatever luxurious capabilities that automakers can put in these hyperpods. So this gives a, a way for the automotive industry to adapt to a new system of transportation and, and still maintain a business, even though personal transportation cars no longer really exist. Now, the other great thing about the hyperpod system is that the transportation network within Paradisa City is done so well that you won't even need or want to own your own personal car. 
the cost of car ownership is a huge expense nowadays. Given the opportunity, people will save themselves money by not having to buy and own a car. The cost of automobile ownership can often be up to 10, 15, maybe even 20% of your personal income. So people would be saving loads and loads of money by not having to own their own car. And uh, to make up for that, the Paradisa City Hyperpod system can basically get you faster to your destination than any other form of transportation within a city today. So one thing I'll be mocking up in the future are the other Hyperpod sizes. So like a Hyperpod that can take eight people, 15 people, and then a van. And then the final thing to address, there will be in Paradisa City, or should I say, on the outskirts of Paradisa City, the ability to use regular conventional type cars. That'll be for situations where you need to leave the city and go out into a rural destination. And so in that situation, there'll be underground parking garages where these vehicles will be stored. And most likely, I don't think a lot of people will be personally owning them just because the cost of ownership of owning a vehicle is uh, prohibitive. But for the few people that do own their own vehicles or rental companies that want to rent out four by fours so you can go camping, go off to a ski resort, national park, if you want to go to the beach, these will be located on the very outskirts of the city. So uh, vehicles like this, I bought this is the modified this. This is a Lego set from a few years back. I've obviously, you know, given a new grill for electric vehicles with the autonomous sensors on there. And maybe you live or work in a rural area outside of the city, or maybe you're a geologist or a biologist or a research person, uh, or you run a wheat field. And so that's what these types of vehicles are for them. And what they do is they just, uh, if they need to go into the city, they just park at the parking stations at the outskirts of the city. And then they have access to the hyperpod transportation system. And then the other form is the racetrack area on the outskirts of the city. For people who love automotive racing, there will be a garage and a place to store race cars. And even if you want to rent a convertible sports car and go off to the beach, go and visit the Grand Canyon or Yosemite National Park, Joshua Tree National Park, you can rent various vehicles to do that. If you want to go glamping or camping or go hiking out in the wilderness, you're able to rent or lease a car or if you happen to own your own car, they just won't be allowed within the city limits. And there you have it, guys. I just unveiled the Paradisa City Hyperloop Station as well as the Cargo Hyperloop and the Inner City Hyperpod system. So if you're as excited for a Lego Hyperloop as I am, smash the like button. Go ahead and subscribe so that in the future when I start building Hyperloop Station, you get to see awesome videos on that and leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think of the Hyperloop and Hyperpods. And on that note, I'll check y'all later.